I'm getting requests for longer videos. To me, longer videos uh, are actually easier. I could do an uncut, just put all the, the bumps and humps in there and not even worry about it. Start the camera, run the job, load the film, keep on trucking. I'm going to try that with this one. There's no cuts other than the camera stopped once, so it's as long as it is. If it's an hour, it's an hour. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Got to do a little adjustment on the, the mounting of the. Uh, I have to do a little adjustment on the mounting of the drip can. It works, but the bar that came with it had been beat up pretty badly. So I took it over on the piece of railroad iron on the bench and flattened it out. Now I'm going to mount it back up again. With the bar straightened, I'm going to attach it back onto the framework. Then take these two wrenches, thanks Louie, and put a kink in the frame. Then I'm going to take these two wrenches, thanks Louis, and I'm going to twist this beam so that it holds the can straight over the top of the wheel.
add some water.
like rubbing your head and patting your stomach. Also, the more water you have in the, in the cup, the faster it comes out because there's more head pressure against the valve. So I'm building up quite a puddle underneath. So I seem to be knocking my seat out to the point where I'm going to fall off of it. So that's going to have to be secured because that is uncomfortable as a dickens. I'm able to make a good flat grind across it. It's just a little bit concave because I'm not very adept at holding it flat. But this is much better than what I could ever expect to get off the bench grinder without a jig.
This is what the other side looked like to start with. Dry that off a little bit and you can see it better. This is what it looked like originally. This is what it looks like now. now. As I said, I've got a little concave grind on there because I'm not holding it steady. But that little bit of work took out a whole lot of divots and pits. Now I'm going to come over and hit this side.
can see one issue. The vibration is causing the valve to open. I think a little tiny O-ring in there would probably put some friction on that valve and make it so I don't go through the water as fast. But right now, I've got a flood pouring out. But at least the valve lets me control it. If I drilled a hole in there, I would have two choices. Make a new hole and plug the old one or hit the first one exactly right. Still some serious pits back in here, but those won't hurt anything. The edge is fairly sharp. I've got one pit right there. The spot that we just ground off over here looks to be in really good shape. And this is the last part that we just ground. I'm going to take just a few more passes over it. Looks pretty good. It got 
quite a few facets on here. I'm not really pleased with the way that I've got the concave surface on it. I was hoping more for a flatter surface. Same thing on this side. That's my skill level. I'm, I'm still rocking all over the place trying to hold the thing straight. But it's a lot better than what it was. I'm going to take a few more passes. I'm going to take a few more passes over the stone. See if I can make this just a little bit flatter. And then I think it's done. Then we'll give it a test. But before I do that, I want to put an O-ring on that. See how this fits. Well, I went in there okay, but it's not gripping the shaft the way I want it to. provide a friction fit. There we go. That's got some drag on it. Three O-rings in there makes it so that that goes in and acts like a compression spring. Then the shaft has to force its way into the O-rings. Makes a little drag on it. That's what I'm looking for. Now, if we haven't plugged up the output with the O-rings, we should be good. Now, it's, it's dripping quite nicely. Good because I got a huge puddle on the floor and I'm going to have to put a bucket underneath this thing to catch all the water if I run it the way it was before.
I have one nick in the blade right there in the center and I'm gonna to have to take off an awful lot of blade to get rid of that nick so I'm just not gonna try Well, considering what it looked like before, I'd say that's pretty good. Now I've got a bit of a burr. I rolled over a burr on it just a little bit. So I'm going to take a stone and knock that burr off. Let's see how it does on this piece of pine. This is bevel up.
bevel down. Bevel down is always more aggressive. I think it's just because of the way I hold my hand. Is really the, the angle of intersection between the two blade surfaces is the same, one side or the other. some real good on this with a thousand grit water stone. No, it needs to be out there.
I think I can make a big difference in this spoke shave. I think I can make a big difference in this draw knife if I had a thousand grit. I think I can make a big difference. I think I could make a big difference in this draw knife if I went over the thousand grit. I think I can make a big difference in this water. I think I can make a big difference in this draw knife if I ran it over the thousand grit water stone. It's sharp and it cuts, but it's still just a little bit toothy. Now this is one that I ran over the water stone. Stone isn't the end result that I want. But it sure does put me up on the, the job a lot quicker. I went from completely dull and pitted to cutting sharp in that amount of time. This took me about four and a half hours of stone work and it wasn't as, as rough. This one wasn't as rough as this one was. Using the water stone at the end. I think using a draw knife is going to be a lot more pleasant for me. And I have I have, let's see, one, two, three, four. This one's in real rough shape. That's a lot of grinding to bring this one back. But it's the cool one because it's got the adjustable handles on it. This one is in uh, fair condition compared to the rest. Needs a new handle. And this one has been just hammered on. Somebody bent the handle. I don't know how they bent the handle on this one, but they bent the handle. But it's a huge 
made by D. Warden, whoever D. Warden is. But I think this is going to be a, a good candidate for the Waterstone too. I think this one's going to be a good candidate for the Grindstone too, just because of the size of it. So if I can take a four hour job and turn it into an hour and a half to two hour job, all my efforts to get that grinding wheel up and running This is the roughest of the batch. It's got a big chunk out of it. That's going to take a lot of grinding. This one, the blade is fairly straight. It's got some rust on it, but it's not too bad. Needs a new handle. Actually, two handles because this one's split pretty badly. This one I went over and sharpened a bit, but it was in the early days and I got really tired of rubbing this thing on the stone. Still needs quite a bit of work done on it. It's got some major pits in that area. So I think this is a good candidate for the grinding wheel. This one, just because of size, is a great candidate for the grinding wheel. And this is the first one I sharpened. It's got the huge nick in it. And I was able to make the backside fairly clean. Still need some more work on the front side because the flat spot is, the sharp spot is, is very small. But I think this one is a great candidate for the grinding stone too. This is a 12 inch. This one is a 10 inch. Eight. Seven. And another eight. And this Fulton I did completely by hand. It's a 10. That was a huge amount of work. That's the one we just worked on. This is the one I just did. This is one that I did on the water stones. About the same time I did this one. That was a lot of grinding. They came out okay, but they stopped me cold on the whole draw knife idea.
not only do I have draw knives to work on, I've got a lot of grindstone. Not only do I have draw knives to work on, not only do I have draw knives to work on, not only do I have draw knives to work on, I've got a lot of plain blades. This one somebody sharpened with a small diameter grinding wheel. Did a bad job of it. It skipped all over the place. But it's a perfect size for this two inch wide grindstone. But this grindstone is but it's a perfect size for this two inch wide grindstone.
That's just off the grindstone. Well, it's been 31 long episodes. It's been 31 long episodes, but I think I've got a good grinding wheel set up. Still need to make a way to catch the water coming off of it. So I have a bit of a lake build up underneath there. But surprisingly enough, I didn't get any water sprayed on me. I expected that grinding wheel to be throwing water all over me. It threw it away from me. I think because I had the I think that was because I had the blade up here and it was acting like a scraper and taking the water off. So there wasn't much water to be flung after it came off of the blade. But it sure did fall onto the floor a lot. The wheel's still cutting well. But I think I need a mop. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. 
you know, I read them all. 